Hello again, everyone. Hope you had a good day or evening, depending where you are. Uh, tonight, I don't have um, a specific agenda, but I do want to share with you some general things about how we are, life in general, what things to pay attention a little bit more, and things like that. So I hope you'll enjoy it, as I think it's probably necessary for everyone especially uh, my young friends at your age, which used to be the age that I used to come from. <laughs> we all grow older and we all gain experiences and uh, through this journey of life, we'll learn things that it is good to know if it has been helpful and if it's important, it should be shared to uh, some other members of this earth uh, while they're younger so they can start benefiting from it, from their young age rather than waiting to find it out all by themselves having gone through whatever the hell they may go through to learn it. <laughs> so let's examine the effects of our environment and the society that we are raised in or grew up in on us and our behavior and our thoughts and um, how we approach and perceive life and uh, perceive ourselves. It seems to me that from the time that we are born, we are given a certain kind of a mandate, whether directly or indirectly, depending on the topic or the situation or the activity. But in general, the life turns into a certain kind of a competition. The mandate is something, as I'm sure most of you have realized, if you've if you sit down and think about it a little bit, we're all encouraged from childhood, whether purposely or unpurposely, through our parents um, in good faith or through our teachers or through just seeing how things are and uh, noticing, observing what we need to create a certain kind of a um, comfort or lifestyle palatable to our own desires of navigating our ship in this journey of life. In other words, that kind of a lifestyle that we are looking for. We have been encouraged or corralled to compete, to prove ourselves that we are better than the next person. Now, God knows nobody questioned all these people who meant well for us, that most probably they didn't even know themselves why they should encourage us to be better than the next person. Why would we need to be better than the next person when we don't even know who the next person or his, his or her qualifications are and what benefits it would serve to be better than that person? Is that person the benchmark or the symbol of perfection or the achievement award of life that we are supposed to have that as a role model? Why don't we, why don't we possibly choose a role model according to some guidance or according to our own observations of life and hope that we could do our best to create what we are in this world to create? according to our own plans and agenda or capabilities. To be better than somebody else, it has pretty much no effect, no positive effect on us other than creating a certain kind of a pressure, tension, feelings of dissatisfaction, and discontentment. hope that word is correct, discontentment. If we choose to be or to conduct a certain activity or a project the way we feel is best for us to do or 
meets our capabilities and our standards and our expectations. And our interest to put as much time as we feel it's adequate or sufficient, it would give us a different kind of a feeling for our day and for, our, for how we feel about ourselves. When I'm supposed to be doing something, let's say, I don't know, just as small as, <laughs> just the example, maybe to uh, install this, which obviously I can't. <laughs> How come it doesn't open? Ah, I was so strong when I put it together, now I can't do it. So if I'm supposed to be, let's say, assemble these, this salt shaker, by the way, this is pink salt, you know, from some, some from Himalayas mountains apparently it's goody stuff anyhow if I'm supposed to be assembling something or putting something to work why would I need to be trying to do it better than somebody else as long as I can do it as best as I possibly can or as I wish to do maybe I can do a better job but I, right now, since it is not a matter of uh, life and death or any severity to it or any particular serious importance to it, it's like it's not an administration of a medicine or something to make sure I do the best possible job I can do for the betterment of the, betterment of the patient or doing my responsibility for the purpose of my own conscience and my own standards of excellence for taking care of somebody else's well-being, life, or a serious responsibility. So having said that, if this is not of that kind of a nature, why would it not be enough if I just do a good job and functions perfect and I'm happy? Why do I need to have something in my head that I'm supposed to be better than somebody else. Now, this was, a, I'm sure you understand, this was an example. <laughs> Life is not as simple as this. But in general, I mean, any task, any work, any uh, project, why do I need to play better tennis than somebody else when I am just enjoying it and learning what I want to learn and getting what I want to get out of it? Why am I supposed to run faster than somebody else unless I really want to, and that's my wish and my plan, just to run as fast as I can, not necessarily running faster than somebody else, but just running as fast as I can because that's what I want to do, that's what I enjoy doing. Why would I need to do something in comparison to the quality or the style of same thing being done by somebody else? Why? Why do I need that pressure? Wouldn't that automatically make me feel less to begin with? Haven't even started that task, that possibility? Why would I need to think less of myself and only believe that I will be good enough if I do it better than somebody else or equal to somebody else? Why am I already in my own mind, or what the society has put into my mind, which we need to be aware of it and simply don't pay attention to it. Why am I, to begin with, have been, in, have been programmed to think I'm not good enough? Not necessarily directly has been told to me or you or anything. Me means all of us. But obviously the way the society, the teachers, the parents, the whole culture of humanity, the way they have presented it to each other, makes one feel, to begin with right out of the outset, right out of the gate, I'm not good enough. Well, that's a hell of a way of starting somebody's life or somebody's day by simply... <laughs> <laughs> making them feel that everything you do is supposed to be better than somebody 
whoever the hell that is, I don't care and I don't know, but I'm supposed to be better than what I can do, better than myself. If I'm supposed to be better than myself, why didn't I become that idiot that I'm supposed to be better than? I mean, I am here as me because the world probably needed somebody like me. More or less, whatever it is, I am probably the puzzle, one of the puzzles of billions and billions and billions and trillions of puzzles that puts this universe together. So if I am necessary to be in this world, why am I supposed to be doing things as good or same as somebody else? Why not to the best of my own ability? Why wouldn't my head only contain when I do something, the only purpose would be to do the best I would like to do, or I can do, or I, I, my know-how allows. Yes, I like to learn things if I want to, but, but having said that, let's, let's, let's think that I have learned something to a level that I want to do something, whatever it is, in a professional way or in a, in a serious way of, you know, let's say play tennis, serious tennis or whatever it is. But why does it have to be different than the ultimate that I can do or what I decide to do out of the ultimate that I can do? All of that, what it does, it creates a certain kind of a comparison and competition between me, this, that, and the other, which to begin with creates a resentment and creates to constantly, when thinking of others or passing by others or seeing others or just thinking about ourselves and how we did this job, instead of seeing how we are, what we have accomplished, what we have become and what path we are on and where we want to go and how we are going to go about it and how good we have become in what we do, we constantly try to see how it's been done by measuring it. we go far further than this thought pattern and we actually enter a competition. How good can I do this better than the others? Rather than, why do I need a competition? So then there is another thing that is introduced here. Because we have also been taught a certain kind of a level of ego or it's been created in us to entertain or to treat or to respect or create a certain kind of an ego and constantly feeling that as long as my ego is not caressed and um, satisfied then I'm not happy so the competition and feeling of having to do better than the others is what's been put into me and then me feeling like I'm not good enough as long as I'm not better than everybody else and enter into competition of any kind just to see how good I am. Why do I have to compete to see how good I am? Why wouldn't I be the benchmark? Why wouldn't I be the level of my own judge for the level of my own performance? according to my own abilities and my own desires and decisions of spending whatever time and effort I can on a certain matter. Why does it have to be gauged against others? Why not just against my own intentions? I can do that. I can do the same job in different kind of qualities. One would be like when I just want to do a shallow job and the other one would be when I want to do a more serious job and the other one would be as if I want to do the best job I can. Why do I need to be in a competition of some kind, any kind? For who? For what? To satisfy my ego, to prove to myself that I worth something? Why can't I be content and, and strong enough to know that I am valuable 
and the others don't value more than me that I have to measure myself against them to prove to myself that I am also valuable. Why can't I know the truth that I am valuable? I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to compare myself to anybody. For nothing. For anything. I'm a man in this world learning and trying to do things that I feel I should be doing. Great. Why do I need affirmation of the others? As long as I know what I do, it's beneficial for the others in general. In other words, it doesn't harm others. And maybe even beneficial to the others, but definitely as long as I know it doesn't it's not harmful to others, whatever it is that I do, to the environment, to the others. So it's in a balanced activity, positive activity. So why would I need to measure myself against anybody to feel confident? The confidence should come from how I feel about my life. And my life should naturally give me a great feeling because that's all is necessary for me to know that I am alive and I am doing what I can and I should be good enough. I'm not saying that we should be lazy of any kind, but what I am saying is that we don't have to be doing everything better than somebody else. Everybody has a specialties or expertise. They could or could not be doing it better than me or somebody else. Who cares? It's their life, and this is my life. So my confidence should come from within me, from what I read, what I learn, how I contribute to my fellow man, or how I uh, conduct myself in life, how I affect the others positively. It shouldn't have anything to do with how good of a tennis player I am. Actually, I wasn't bad at one time, <laughs> but as long as I enjoy my tennis level, that should be giving me the satisfaction that it needs to for my life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be winning a certain competition. What I'm trying to get at is that we have been accustomed and pumped into our heads that unless we are better than everybody else or somebody else, we are not good enough. I want to take that out of your head and start thinking that we are not, we don't need to attain a certain kind of a prize or product or any outside material other than ourselves or any comparison to the others or any better good looking girlfriend or any other person that we would feel if I am with her, then I am then valuable, worthy, a higher echelons of value and importance. None of that should matter to bring me the complete or at least partial freedom. Because all of these that we just talked about is a form of a slavery that we are dependent on something else, another echelon of achievement, another person being with us, another acquirement, another thing is that we should have just to prove or just to feel we are worth it, we are worthwhile. And I'm saying that worth and that satisfaction, contentment and happiness should come from whatever it is that we can put into whatever it is we want to accomplish as good as we can for the purpose of our own not for the purpose of being better or more valuable by having things but having a better a prettier girlfriend or car or things just to see that we attach ourselves or their value value of having things to ourselves so therefore that's how we gain and increase our value so not to make the long story short, for now I want to stop here and ask you 
not to depend your happiness and your worth to other things not to have to um, compare yourself with other people in any shape or form whether it's physical whether it's mental whether it's whatever it is there's no need for that the truth is you're important that's why you're in this world if you're a man you're a man if you're a girl a woman you're a woman and you don't need any comparison to anything anybody else to prove that you're a woman or to prove that you're a man you've been born as a woman you've been born as a man and that's all there is the truth and the evidence you need the rest of it is what your own thoughts illusions imaginations creates which none of them is reality other than the reality itself the reality itself is what is very re easy to prove there's no need to proving it because that is the reality the rest of the things that needs to be proven in your thoughts that means they don't worth anything because the reality doesn't need proving and when you think about proving something that thought is created but that thought is not a reality the reality is who you really are which you can see with your own eyes and with your own existence and everything that you do there's no other reason to pursue any reason or any way to prove anything to yourself as far as if you're a good woman a real woman if you're a good man a real man none of that stuff all thoughts are just thoughts and that includes comparisons and uh, thinking if you're good enough and you have to be better than this you have to accomplish this to be worthy you have to have this you have to buy this you have to have a prettier girlfriend da -da 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 -da, all the rest of it so i want to tell you that enjoy yourself relax about your life don't have to compete in anything do whatever it is that you think is necessary for you to do and enjoy your life and relax you are who you are and nobody can change the truth and you don't need to do anything to prove anything and competition is a way to keep us a slave and sometimes thoughts that's just nonsense that we should not even entertain it let alone try to prove anything that it brings up and turns as a question so don't question yourself and go enjoy your life and competition is a way to keep us slave and you don't have to keep having things or keep doing things to prove your worth you are worthy as worthy can be and you enjoy your life and accomplish yourself the best you can no need for anything else have a nice evening talk to you soon